Welcome to We Will Rise, Creating Hope, an inspirational call with faith leaders presented by Northeast Delta Human Services Authority's Faith Partnership Initiative with messages of hope, understanding, encouragement, and overcoming adversity. As a government agency, Northeast Delta HSA can effectively help our citizens meet many of their physical and behavioral health needs. However, government cannot solve complex societal problems alone, so we are calling on Houses of Faith to join with us as we seek to battle mental illness and addiction. When evidence-based treatment is combined with faith, our region's people will gain a greater sense of purpose, belonging, and hope. With the current global coronavirus pandemic, this is our opportunity to gather as a community and build a unified Northeast Louisiana where everyone thrives and reaches their full human potential. We will rise, creating hope. Good afternoon. Welcome to Northeast Delta Human Services Authority's Faith Partnership Initiative Daily Call. We will rise, creating hope. I am Dr. Carolyn Hunt, and I will be sharing today's message of hope with you. And before I get started, at other times, I would like us to pray. I welcome everyone that's on the line today that has tuned in. And we're just going to pray and believe God for uh, just a refreshing and a time that we can grow together uh, in faith and helping one another during this pandemic time. So if you would just take a few moments to join me in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you today. We thank you for being our God and being our Lord. We thank you for such another beautiful day that we can rejoice and thank you for life itself. Father, I thank you that you said in your word, if your people who are called by your name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven, forgive the sins, and heal the land. We thank you today, oh God, that you are healing the land. We thank you that you are a healer and that you have never left us nor forsaken us. So we thank you for being our God and being our Lord. We come together as two agreeing and touching that anything that we shall ask, it shall be given to us of our Father, which is in heaven. Father, we thank you that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, that we should show forth the praise of you, God, who has called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And we are the light of this dark world. I thank you that our light is shining even brighter during this pandemic, during this time of stress, this time of frustration and worry. I thank you that the light is shining through us to help others to overcome where we are. Father, I thank you today that we are strategically lined up with the ladder that touches the third heaven and sits on the earth, that the angels are descending and ascending according to the words that I speak. Father, for you told us whatever is bound on earth is found in heaven and whatever is loose on earth is loose in heaven. So today I release your revelation, your healing, your deliverance, salvation, your peace, your joy, your love. Father, I release the finance and resources that have been demonically blocked up and are being loose right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that our minds are renewed, that we have the mind of Christ, that we have a creative and productive mind. I thank you, O oh Lord God, that we decree and declare that our mental faculties are trained by practice to discriminate and distinguish between what is morally good and noble and what is evil or contrary to your word, God. Father, I thank you right now that you are leading us and guiding us and that we are vertically and horizontally lined up with your will, Father, that the blood of the everlasting covenant of Jesus Christ is covering us right now. So, Father, I thank you that surely goodness and mercy have our back all the days of our lives, and we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. Now, Father, allow every word that comes forth out of my mouth be used to build up and to edify and to strengthen and to grow your people. And we give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Once again, it is so good to be back on the line. I want to thank Northeast Delta Human Service Authority and Dr. Montag Sizer for uh, spearheading and putting this together and allowing us an opportunity to talk with you 
and encourage you during this uh, challenging time. So let's go to the word of God. I have two scriptures that I really want to put into your spirit. On last week, I began a message, a mindset for success. But I want to take it a little bit farther today on that same level of thinking. And my topic today is elevate your thinking for the next level. Elevate your thinking for the next level. During this time that we have been uh, uh, experiencing social, I call it physical distancing, and I've been at home quite a bit and having an opportunity to pray each day and seek God's face. I believe that this is a time that God wants us to elevate our thinking to go to the next level in our life. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs 23 and 7, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And as he continues to think, so he will become. We will become a product of what we think. The text that I want to use today, I love this text, is found in John chapter 5, and I'm going to read for you scriptures 1 through 9 because I want all the listeners on the phone to have a knowledge of the word that I am going to be talking about today. And it begins to read, and I'm reading from the King James Version of the Word of God, John chapter 5 starting at verse one. After this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called up, called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of important folk, in other words, crippled and paralyzed people, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Verse 5. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? And the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step down before me. And Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Once again, my topic, elevate your thinking for the next level. You know, so often we let our environment, how we were raised, and other people's expectations of us set the limits for our life. We adapt to what's around us. And if you take an oak tree seed and plant it in a two-foot pot, that oak tree will never become what it was created to be if you leave it in the pot. Not because there's something wrong with the seed, but because of the environment that it's in. It's so easy to just fit in, to go with the crowd, to be like everyone else. But God did not create you to be average. He created you to stand out, to go beyond the norm, to leave your mark on this generation. You have seeds of greatness on the inside of you. You're supposed to go further than the people who raised you. Just the other day, my daughter was busy with me, and I thought about that. And I said to myself, she's supposed to live better, to be more successful, and set a new standard. Because she's supposed to go further than I am. So you may be in an environment where people have addictions, low self-esteem, depression, and poverty. You can't stop the environment that you were born in or even possibly the, the environment that you're living in right now. But here's the key to it, you all. Don't let that become normal in your thinking. If you accept that as who you are, it will keep you from your destiny. The Bible speaks of how we are in the world, but we are not of this world. 
You may be in a limited environment, but you don't have to be of it. I want to say that again. You may be in a limited environment, but you don't have to be of it. Don't let that environment get in you. If you see struggle and lack and poverty long enough, your mind can become conditioned to thinking that that's all it will be for your life. This is who I am. I'll always struggle. I'll never have enough. And it will create a condition and also stronghold within our mind. That may be what's been normal. But let me tell you something. The good news is you're a barrier breaker. I've always seen myself as a barrier breaker, as one that can go beyond what I see, the environment. I was raised in an environment of poverty in the cotton field. And while I was in that cotton field, I always told myself, this cannot be. This has to change. So I didn't allow my environment to get in me and become the environment that I was in. You are a barrier breaker. You have the power, the favor, the talent, the ability to break out and go further. God has breathed his life into you. He calls you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. So I want to encourage you, don't let your mind become conditioned for mediocrity. Don't let that change who you really are. God said that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He took time and created you. And he created you with everything that you need on the inside of you. But, you know, sometimes people will try to put you in a box. They'll tell you such thing as, you can't do that. You can't graduate from college. It costs too much. You can't start your own business. You can't change an environment that's been like that. You can't make people be anything. Uh, you don't have the resources to go any further. You'll never afford a nice place to live. You, you never get well. You never meet the right person. People can say those things to you, and they say that because their thinking is limited. They'll try to put their limitations on you. The Bible tells us that evil communication can corrupt our good behavior, but also can corrupt our thinking. You have to say to yourself, I refuse to be mediocre because people around me are. I refuse to be addicted, to be depressed. I refuse to have low expectations. I know that I am a barrier breaker. Begin to talk to yourself. Begin to say, I'm going to set a new standard for myself and for my family. But it starts in your thinking. Nothing will change until you make up your mind that you're not going to accept what is. Until you change your thinking about what is, you can't move from that place. You have to take the limitations off yourself. You have so much potential. Break out of that box and not be afraid to try something new. I've been thinking about all of this since I've been away during this pandemic. And I realized something also, that the enemy would love to keep that potential from ever coming out. He'll use bad breaks, negative comments, people, circumstances. He'll try to use your age, your color, your background, he'll try to use these things to keep you from believing in yourself, from believing that you can rise to the next level. I'm talking today about elevating your thinking for the next level. See, many people today have let their mind become conditioned to thinking they're, that they've already reached their limit, that they're just created to be average, that they're never doing anything great. Well. I have something else to say about that. These, these persons that think that way, they've adapted to their environment. Remember Proverbs 23 and 7 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. They have begun to think in their heart that this is the way it's going to be. But we have to take the limitations off. You know, I was reading and, and during my study time, I read a study that was done with fleas. Yes, with fleas. 
Research, researchers put fleas in a container and jump out. But they hit the lid again and again. Before long, they realized that they were stuck. At one point, the researchers removed the lid, but much to their surprise, the fleas didn't even try to jump out anymore. They had hit that lid so many times that they had become conditioned to thinking they couldn't get out. And even though the lid was off, they didn't even try. Hmm. Sometimes as we act like these fleas because of the environment that we're in, yes, every now and then we act like the fleas because of the environment that we're in. The times, we look at the times that we've tried and we've failed. We look at the age. We look at our circumstances environments around us and we become conditioned to thinking that we can't do anything greater i'll never accomplish my dream i'll never fulfill my purpose i'll never get back in shape i'll never go any farther than this it's time my sisters and brothers to be like the fleas not just stay in the container but to try again it's time to elevate your thinking, get some new information into our minds, dump some old files, get new information, and get up and elevate and our thinking for the next level that God wants to take you in your life. You were not created to live contained, to get stuck. It's time to recondition your mind, elevate your thinking. You know, I can speak very openly about this because as I said, I was born and raised in the country in the cotton field where I went to the field every day just to buy clothes. I remember the labels that were put on me that you would never amount to anything. You would never go any further than your environment. You will be one of the ones that won't do very much. And the thing that I believe helped me was that I did not let it become ingrained in my thinking. I began to think that there is a future for me, that I am a person of greatness, that I can do great things. So I did not adapt to my environment because I believe, and I pray that you believe also, that your life is going to follow your thoughts. If you believe you've reached your limits, you have. If you believe you'll never get well, you won't. If you believe you'll never be educated, you won't. If you believe that you'll never be that CEO or make a change in your community and in your family, then you won't because your mind has become conditioned with limitations. It will keep you from your highest potential. Mm. You have to be bold and get rid of the thoughts that are holding you back. You may not see how you can do it in your own ability, but let me tell you, you're not on your own. Our Father tells us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. You have the most powerful force in the universe breathing in your direction. The wind is blowing in your direction right now. God created you to rise higher, to break barriers of the past, to overcome those bad habits, and to be free from generational curses. People may have labeled you like they did me, labeled you to want you to be average, saying that you won't amount to anything, saying that you won't amount to anything and go any further. But I want to tell you that you are God's masterpiece, and he is continuing to work on you. See, God labels us also, but God labels us as well-able. He labels us as equipped. He labels us as creative. He labels us as anointed. He labels us as having great potential. See, the good news is that people don't determine your destiny, God does. Mm. I am so glad that those persons that spoke negative over me, that said that I would not amount to anything, did not determine my destiny, but that God does. What people have said about you, the environment you're in now, and how you were raised cannot keep you from your purpose. You know, when I counsel people and talk to them, I hear all the different excuses sometimes of you don't understand what I've gone through and you don't understand uh, uh, my environment and nobody else in my, 
my family has gotten an education. Well, why don't you be a barrier breaker? Why don't you set a new standard? Why don't you be the first one to get an education? Why don't you be the first one to open up a business? Why don't you be the first one to go ahead and do some great things in the kingdom? God himself had already taken into account every detail of your life, every bad break, every negative comment, every addiction, every uh, uh, thing that person has said about you, how you were raised, what somebody did or didn't do. He's factored into your life all those things. He's factored all into his plan. And if you stay in faith, instead of defeating you, it will make you stronger. Why will it make you stronger? Because God knows how to take all things and work them out for your good. God knows how to take what the enemy meant for evil and use it to your advantage. God used those negative things that were said about me to pro promote me, to push me, elevate me into my next place. You are full of potential, my sisters and brothers. You are smart. I don't know when's the last time somebody told you that. You are talented. There's no, there's so much you can become and still do. I told you it doesn't matter your age, your color, your background. You can still do great things in the kingdom. And I believe that when we come out of this time, out of this pandemic, well, we've had time to gain fresh information, had time to hit, to hit the reset button, hit the pause button, and pause from running so much and busy, busy, and reflect on what it is that, that God wants to do through us and how we can achieve great things. I believe coming out of this, that our minds will become conditioned to thinking that we can do great things. Ah, and I believe that strongholds that were in our minds that are now being broken and torn down that were keeping us from moving forward. I believe that we are going to have our minds reconditioned to the greatness of who we are. You're a barrier breaker. You are not limited by your education, by how you were raised, by your environment. God has destined you to rise higher. He's destined you to go to the next level. Somebody needs to say right now, I'm expecting to go to the next level when this is over with. Yes, I believe God wants you to go to the next level. Now, in the word of God, in the text that I read earlier, in John 5 and 5, we find a man here that the Bible says a certain man, which means he could be anybody, any of us. He didn't have a name. He, he didn't put a name on this man to let us know that this man could be any of us, can be found in that position. Uh, uh, the people around him, I believe, were good people, but they were all limited by their environment. Uh, and in this text, I believe that Jesus is speaking the same message to many of us today. This man had been there and been in that same way for 38 years. Now, somebody, y'all, that, that's far too long. Just too long, too long. In that place, in that position, in that lap, in that same problem, that same issue, that same condition for 38 years. But now the man was hanging out at the house of mercy with the five colonnades, five meaning the grace of God. I like to say that he was hanging out at a pool called the church or a place that was known for healing. That's why they was waiting on the water to be troubled. Known for healing, for deliverance, for prosperity. It was a place of empowerment. And Jesus approaches this man, which he knows, because he knows all things, that is obviously crippled. He had been laying there around all the paraphernalia, and you can see the paraphernalia that laying there with him. Now let's look at what was right there with this man. He had a mat to lie on. The mat was a symbol of, I have become comfortable. Comfortableness, listen to me, comfortableness is a hindrance to moving to the next level of success. Because in our minds, we think, well, I'm doing good, I'm doing fine, I'm comfortable, I can pay my bills, I'm okay. But is that the level of potential that God has placed on the inside of you? Is that all of it? Is there more that he wants to bring out of you? 
Is there more that he wants to do? It's great. It's, I thank God that we are comfortable and that we can make, pay our bills and that we're of good help. We thank God for that. But is that all? This place speaks to us of our condition of spiritual paralysis. Hmm. He, there was a cup that he had for arms. See, and that was a, 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 a just enough mentality, a, a limitless mentality. The longest I can get my needs met, I'm okay. See, God is a God of more than enough. He does not want us to just have our needs met. He wants us to have more. He said, Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. God wants us to have enough that we can bless somebody else and we can help somebody else and not just meet our needs. Oh, somebody needs to say amen on that. See, he, he, in order to become a giver, you've got to have something more to give. So God wants us to become a giver so we cannot have a just enough mentality. We saw the cup. We, he, the man has a cup there for the arm, waiting on just give me enough to make it through the day. And then we see the crutches. Oh, my goodness, yes, the crutches. We use our excuses, our past, our lack as a crutch. And the crutch speaks to the condition of our mind. We have to get rid of the excuses. We have to get rid of uh, thinking about extreme poverty and defeat and the hurt and the pain and the things that have gone on in our life. I told you God factored all that in. But he doesn't determine, he does not use all that to determine where he wants to take us. God has created great things on the inside of us. And when we began to wonder, why would Jesus ask someone that's been sitting in a situation like that for 38 years this kind of question? When we know that he knows all things, we know Jesus already knew. And Jesus asked the question, do you want to be made whole? Hmm. What kind of question is that? Why did Jesus ask such a question? I pondered over that for a while, and I believe that it was to get him to think, to get that man to face his condition and think about why are you stuck? Why? Jesus wants us to see the reality of where we are. See, sometimes we're stuck but we are stuck in our minds. We're stuck because we failed to take in new files into the computer of our mind and began to experience new things and try new things without being afraid. Jesus said in Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive power, which is the ability, the efficiency, and the might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the world. God called you to a life that will make the world shame, jealous, and envy of who our God is. God called you to a life that you could shine in. But until we face the reality of where we are and know that is not where God intended for you to be, that question isn't as shallow as we think. Do you want to? Do you want to excel to the next place? The question appears to the very center of the man's heart. It exposed his thought process and started him to thinking. Jesus knew that this man had a treasure on the inside of him. Because, see, you have to know, according to 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, that we possess the precious treasure in human vessels of earth, that the grandeur and exceeding greatness of power may be shown to be from God and not from ourselves. There is potential on the inside of you. Potential is dormant ability, reserved power, untapped strength, unused success, hidden talents, and uncapability. Uncap Potential is unexposed ability. We have to begin to tell ourselves we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. The Bible tells us that the people who have changed the world have taken impossible out of their dictionary. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens, who empowers and infuses me to do it. See, this strength is a continual ability that is infused into us by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we're not limited. We can do all things. This ability is already deposited in us. But do you want to? That's the question. Do you want to? Do you want to go to the next level? When you set a limit on what you can do, you set a limit on what you will do. Hmm. Yes. Paul encourages us in Philippians 2 and 5. 
Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Have the mind of Christ. Think like Christ. God wants you to adopt his mind and his attitude. He wants you to have kingdom thinking. God is saying to us, do you want to? Do you want to do great things? Do you want to accomplish great things in your life? God bless you today. That's the question that I have for you. That question is, do you want to? And if you do, pick up your bed, walk, fulfill your purpose, and go into your destiny. For God has great things for you. It's time to go to the next level. God bless you today. Once again, this concludes our message for today. And on behalf of Northeast Delta Faith Partnership Initiative, I want to thank you for listening. I want to once again thank, thank Dr. Montague Sizer, all of the Northeast Delta Human Services Authority, and invite you to join us again tomorrow at noon for more words of hope during this difficult and challenging time. God bless you. Elevate your thinking for the next level. Thank you for joining We Will Rise, Creating Hope, an inspirational call with faith leaders presented by Northeast Delta Human Services Authority's Faith Partnership Initiative. Please join us on our future calls Monday through Friday. We will rise, creating hope.